high school, five days a week. You got a part-time job alongside, you get accepted into university. You pack your bags, you leave home, think you've got your shit together. You haven't. I've never met a single student with their shit together, but that's fine. What's important is that you look like you've got your shit together. saying that shit and then do a look at the camera then I explain who I am and then I'll basically wrap up by saying I really don't know why the fuck I'm doing this. You're not going to be able to hear what I'm saying in these bits, are you? Yeah, yeah. microphone's recording, mate. Eh? Yeah, I know, but you're playing music over the top, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
with more students turning to credit cards, overdrafts and private loans. When I was at university, I didn't have a bloody clue. But I did have one slightly unconventional method of staying afloat. I'd start off by drinking. This happened a lot in my first year. And then I'd wake up, usually about 20 minutes before a lecture. Charity shops tend to stick together. There are about five of them all on one street on my walk into university. And I've always loved a bargain. Every Monday I used to turn up to uni with a brand new outfit that I'd bought from a charity shop about five minutes earlier that morning. And in my bag, it would likely be Tuesday to Sunday's new outfits too. See, this is where I actually lost track on budgeting. The clothes I were buying were all bargains. However, a one pound t-shirt is only cheap if you buy just one. Not hundreds. Eventually I ran out of money, just like most students do. And with my next maintenance loan still weeks away, fashion seemed like the cause of all of my problems. But it was actually the pressure of trying to maintain a degree and a social life that led me to binge buying clothes. Fashion was actually my solution. It was a little trick that I used to make sure that my student loan would last. Here's how. As soon as my student loan dropped, I'd already be on the lookout for some cool clothes. Usually vintage, retro or design. Charity shops often had high-end branded clothes for very little money. I once found a Burberry t-shirt for sale in a charity shop for £3 and bought it assuming that it was fake. I use social media platforms to legit check the items. Facebook has dedicated groups for legit checking. It's really simple. You just join the group, upload some photographs, and the people in the group will tell you if it's real or fake. This doesn't cost anything, and quite often, if the item is real, people will start asking if you want to sell straight away. My Burberry tea was real, and it was also limited edition. But I wasn't selling. Not yet, anyway. See, the nice thing about this budgeting trick is that you always get to wear lots of really cool clothes. And you're supporting charities in the process. More often than not, a few weeks into term, I will have spent a huge chunk of my student loan on clothes. However, it was always an investment designed to prolong my student loan. See, I would buy the clothes for usually somewhere between 50p to uh, 3 to 4 pounds. But I would never buy anything that I couldn't sell for more money than I bought it for. I wasn't necessarily shopping to make profit. I was still only buying things for me to wear personally. But when the time comes and my bank account hits zero, I knew that I could easily make my money back. The thrill of finding bargains was definitely a better alternative to spending all of my money on beer. When the money starts running out, that's when I'll start selling. Selling vintage or retro clothes is easy. All you need is a smartphone with a camera and internet access. If an item of clothing exists, then it's definitely got a demographic. Most people who sell second-hand clothes online use an app called Depop. It's a little bit like Instagram, but it's dedicated to buying and selling second-hand clothes. But my personal favourite strategy is to look through Facebook groups and try and find one that's full of my demographic. For example, if I found a fisherman's jacket, I might try and find a fishing page. If I found a Prada t-shirt, I might try and sell in a Prada Facebook group. And trust me, there's a Facebook group for pretty much everything. One huge benefit is that you always have a fresh rotation of clothes. Once you get bored of something, it doesn't go to waste and it re-enters the ecosystem. The way I see it is, you're shopping in charity shops. So the money goes to charity. You're reusing a garment and preventing it from going to waste. The value for money is insane when compared to the fast fashion industry. Oh, and that's right. You're also not supporting the dirty industry that's responsible for so much of our greenhouse gases. Older garments have a story and a history. The majority of fashion nowadays is inspired by the 70s, 80s and 90s. So why not buy something that's actually from the 70s, 80s and 90s? I feel a lot better when I buy something that supports a charity rather than a business. So here are some tips and tricks. Don't go crazy and blow all of your money on clothes. Try and budget the best that you can and set aside some money for the start of the term to invest into fashion. Buy clothes that you want to wear, not just things that will definitely sell. This usually prevents me from getting too carried away. Remember, this is just a part-time thing. You've still got a degree to think about. Also, don't just do it for the money. Use it as a way to express yourself. Sometimes you might buy something that you don't want to sell. That's fine. You don't always have to sell everything. But I usually 
advertise these items anyway for a ridiculously high price, just in case. I always try not to get too attached to the items, just because there's so many wavy garbs out there, and it's good to have a rotation. It means that my style always varies. Oh, and one last thing. Make sure that you start advertising before you run out of money, not after, or you'll end up like me.